content. Okay, well, so welcome back. Now this time last week, we put a little video together and just said, could you please tell us what you'd like to know as a simple skills. We did the Wimoto parts reveal, you remember that? Well, that was fantastic. And at the end of it, I said, look, tell us what simple skills you haven't had yet. What would you like to see? And so many of you said one thing rose to the surface about all the others, soldering, when it came. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants to seem to know how to solder two bits of wire together with a nice, safe, secure joint properly. Now, obviously there is an element of skill to soldering. You have to develop some skill. You don't have to be clever. You don't have to be talented like a guitarist or a pianist. You just have to practice because there are some do's and some don'ts. So what I want to do with this Simple Skills video is show you the don'ts so you, you don't get it wrong. Because if you just attack soldering straight blind, never done it before, look at it, yeah, that can't be hard. This is the solder wire, this is the solder nine, you melt that on there and it's done. No, it isn't. The weld will fall apart, you'll have what's known as a cold weld. There is a certain technique that you must carry out that must be done, and there are some other do's and does as well. And if you get them wrong, you're never going to make a decent soldered joint. And no matter how many times you try, you'll just be confused why it doesn't work, then it gets frustrating, then you get bored with it, and then you can uh, then you end up with a squeeze joint instead, because it's easier. So let's show you how to do some basic soldering in a simple way with a few do's and don'ts to help you get practicing and start building this skill for yourself. Shall we do it, Pat? Yep, let's go. Let's get stuck in. Right, okay, so the things you need for the job. First of all, a soldering iron. Can't really do any soldering without a soldering iron. There are other tools you can use. You can use a soldering gun, which is the trigger type with a loop. They're actually a lot quicker and a lot faster to use, but we're gonna use a soldering iron because it's a little bit simpler and safer, and they're cheap as chips. I bought a new one today. My old soldering iron's done a bit too much plastic welding, so it's a bit <laughs> not good. So for 15 pounds, I bought a, so a 40 watt soldering kit from Maplin's, you know, the cheap electrical people. Bought that today, so I've got a brand new one, so that'll do the job. Um, you need a helping hands. Now, when you're soldering, you need three hands it's a three-handed job. And that's because you need to hold the wire still, you need to hold the solder and the soldering iron. And there aren't many humans I know with three hands, so effectively you need a helping hand. So that's one of these. You can buy these in tool shops, in model shops, all sorts of places. I'm sure you've seen you can buy them on the internet. It's like a little multi-adjustable doodah. You can do all sorts of stuff with. They're really great fun. And one of the things you must do if you're gonna do wire with it is this. What I've done with mine, if you come in close now, these little jaws like that they're crocodile clips on the end they're just like a little screwed in crocodile clip you can buy these as replacements if you need to and what i've done with mine is i put a little bit of heat shrink on the jaws because these jaws are quite sharp and if you don't do that then they'll they'll pinch through the wiring so you've got this electrical wire that you're going to clip it to to hold it and obviously those sharp jaws if if you're not careful they can punch a the outside of that insulation. So just all I do is stick a little bit like that, a little bit of heat shrink on the end, trim it off to, to length like that, get a little lighter and just heat shrink it on. And that then puts soft jaws on the end. There we go. Just heat shrink it on. That stays on there then. That's it. Now that's safe to use for soft wire cable. Let's pop that back in there. Right, after your soft jaw having hands thingy, which is quite a useful tool, then you're gonna need some raw materials. Uh, if you're gonna do this, I suggest you spend some time practicing. I really do, I can't recommend that enough. I probably spent an hour practicing for this video today. I spent an hour today just making a few joints, just reminding myself how awkward it can be if you don't get everything absolutely right. So I've got some thick wire, some big thick fat stuff, three mil, and I've got a few bits of one and a half mil wire, so I'm gonna show you how to make some joints out of that. You also need some solder. There's two options with the solder. You get flux core solder and flux loose solder. I would say, so uh, flux itself, we all know, we've all heard of flux, it is a a substance that will help the liquid metal flow. So when you put flux onto hot metal, when you're hoping to join that metal together, you put the liquid metal in like a plumber with soldering a joint on a pipe, it, the flux helps the, the liquid solder flow into the joint nicely and without it, it's extremely hard. If you use a flux-less regular, just a straightforward lead-free solder, you're gonna need to find 
yourself some flux paste. You can buy rosin flux paste on the internet. Just look up rose, R-O-S-I-N, rosin flux paste, like a little tub, and it looks like beeswax. You just dip your electrical wire in it, and then that gives you the flux. But I choose to short circuit that. I just use flux core. So this particular solder has got flux in the core of it. Now, if you've ever done MIG welding, you know you can get flux core wire, so I won't go too much on about that. I'm gonna be using flux core wire today because I couldn't find any rosin flux in time to make this video. The other thing you're gonna need when you've done it, you need a little lighter and some heat shrink because when we've made our joint, we're gonna shrink it in some heat shrink so it's completely waterproof. You know that, I've shown you that loads of times, but we'll come to that a little bit more at the end. So we'll do that once we've done the joint. So first of all, let's set things up, make a little joint. I'll show you a couple of bits of wire and we'll get stuck in. Right, just for the, pur I've prepped a couple of pieces of wire, which I'm gonna use. But just for the purpose of this demonstration, I want to show you as, as closely as I can when it comes to prepping the wire, because I think preparing the wire properly is quite important. So, you know this, Ben. First thing I've always found is you're going to take a piece of wire out the drawer and you're going to use it for a connection, or you're going to join two pieces of wire. If that end has been open to the atmosphere for any period of time, I just nip about a quarter of an inch of it off to get a nice fresh end, because you get corrosion in the end of the wire if it's been open. Once you've done that, you've got a nice clean end, then you can use your wire strippers. You've all seen these. It's a little tool that strips the wire. It's got varied size holeses, holeses, <laughs> various <laughs> sizes, various sizes of holeses, and then you can use it to cut the wires. <laughs> and this is a one and a half mil wire, so there's a one and a half mil slot. You put it in that slot, and as you nip it round, turn it round and nip it, and it takes the insulation off. It's very simple. You've seen these. I know that we we try our hardest, don't we, Ben, not mm. to not to teach people how to suck eggs, but honestly. You know, there are people who watch these videos that are completely new, never done this sort of thing before. I did this sort of thing at school, so it's a long time ago for me. So bear with me. So there we are, you strip the outside off, and it's very important. You strip the outside insulation, you want about three quarters of an inch or so, perhaps a little bit more than that, and then the wire's ready to be joined to another. So I've got a couple done. Here we are, I'm gonna join these two ends together. Can you come in on that pen? And what I've done with those is make, make absolutely doubly sure that you don't trim any of the strands off when you're stripping this insulation away, you can buy automatic trimmers that are they're, they're beautiful. You just go clamp and they take the perfect piece off. If you want to invest in tools like that, if you're going to do it a lot, that's great. Otherwise, you know, you can even use these. I've even seen guys, you know, the street guys who used to fit stereos back in the day, just use a lighter and you, you burn the insulation at the end and just rip it off with your thumb quick and that gets rid of it. And anything that is safe that doesn't trim those wires. If these little strands get cut away accidentally, it builds up resistance, which builds up heat because the wire is too thin for the original cross. If you're using a two mil wire and you've trimmed a third of them away, it's only a 1.75 mil wire, isn't it? And if you, if you need a two mil wire for the load you're putting through it, it's gonna get hot and it's gonna burn and that's not clever. Right, now, when you do the ends, I'll show you. There's a couple of ways you can do this. I'm gonna show you them if I can. Um, I'll show you on this one. This is the first one. Come on in, Ben. This is quite close. You can wind the wire up like that completely so they're twisted together. Then cross them over and twist them into one like that. And make sure that all the ends are covered. You can do that if you wish that's normally the best way to do it. You can also, if necessary, you can spread these very slightly like that. And this is my preferred way of doing it. Just spread the ends out a little bit and then mesh them in together. Got that pen? Just mesh them in until the ends meet each other and then twist that together. I like that, I prefer that because when you do the the roll up twist together method, I just think it's not very tidy, doesn't look very nice. And when the solder comes out, the solder joint comes out, I always think they look a little bit scruffy. And even though you're gonna cover it heat shrink, why not make a nice job, right. So we've got those two wires together, there we are. And that to me is the way I like to twist the wires together. Absolutely smooth, lovely job. And they are no thicker than the outside of the original wire. Now at this point, if you've got a long wire and you're going to put heat shrink on it, it's very important to make sure that you put the heat shrink on before you twist them together. 
because once they're soldered together you can't get the heat shrink on so because this wire is a short piece of wire I haven't got to worry but what you would normally do is you put the heat shrink on first then you shrink then you twist them together and then later on when you're ready you can bring that heat shrink over so I'm going to put this in the little hands get it ready to solder okay ready to go all set up nicely um, first thing is to tin your tip okay you've never heard of that tinning is preparing the tip of your soldering iron ready for the job the soldering iron itself it gets very very hot and therefore any impurities in the atmosphere any oxygen in the atmosphere will oxidize on the surface and you'll get this black sooty mess on the end this is what happens when you get a red hot soldering tip so the way you tin it quite simply is to put a layer of solder just on the end just pop a little bit of solder on the tip not much just a little dab or two and then take it to a wet sponge and wipe off the worst you only want a very thin layer don't wipe it all off obviously you need some on there but just work on it a bit this has already been tinned so it's not too difficult to do first time it takes a little bit of a while not just the tip but all the way along because I'm going to touch the wire with the full length of this what's smoking away there as well is the is the flux it's not the actual solder vaporizing and then with a wet sponge just in there if you buy one of these kits you get this little micro sponge in there you just wipe off the excess and then that nice shiny tip is actually covered in solder and the solder doesn't oxidize so you get a nice clean tip and that's chemically clean again think TIG welding everything has to be perfectly clean to get the right joint and it's very much the same with soldering so flux core solder and the first thing that you'll notice is when you put this on here you touch from underneath the worst thing I've seen people do is they touch the solder onto the tip like I just did and then blob it onto the cold wire that's no good because you'll get what is commonly known as a cold solder but what we have to do is put the soldering iron underneath the wire and heat it from below and I'm using the full length of that pointed tip against the full length of the wire to heat it through and it's going to take probably a minute or so to heat that right up because at the moment if I put the solder on the top the wire is not hot enough to melt it because it is not the soldering iron that melts the solder it's the wire all the soldering iron does is transfers its heat to the wire it's just a heating device for heating the wire up and you can just keep that wire in the vicinity like that it doesn't hurt if you want to put a little bit of solder on there and then touch it underneath that again helps the heat transfer but you're not actually looking to join the wire with blobbing wet solder onto it that's the wrong thing to do you mustn't blob wet solder onto cold wire now look at it changing color you see that going purple now going red that's the oxidization of the copper as the copper wire is heating up so we can introduce the solder again just testing it just checking it out to see if it's ready yet not quite so I'm going to just hold that on there while it warms that wire all the way through just using a little bit of solder underneath just to transfer that heat up through now it will come a point there it goes there it goes that's been almost 30 seconds now just touch the solder gently a little bit at a time onto the wire and as you can see let the solder wick its way in let it drain into the wire don't blob loads of it on that's the worst thing you can do is just pile loads of solder on because it will drop off on the bench in little beads that's enough there a little bit there and then work your way across letting the solder drain into the wire there we go the smoke's coming from a little bit from this insulation and a little bit from the flux itself cool there we go right there we go okay then let it cool once you've finished getting all that solder nicely melted in there let it cool off because if you start touching it too soon you can then crack the solder before it's fully set 
and effectively you'll make a bad joint again builds up resistant and electrically it doesn't become very efficient so once all that's out of the way now we're going to stick some heat shrink on it to make sure it's completely sealed from the elements because it doesn't look very nice as it is we'll have a look there you go, pen. Here we go. now not the nicest looking joint ever but that is fully penetrated all the way through that's absolutely strong and it's no it really isn't much bigger at all than the original wire which is nice because then what we do is take a little piece of heat shrink pick a piece that's as close as you can get obviously if you've got any common sense you would have pre-fitted your piece of heat shrink actually it's that one onto the wire before you started so if you've got a long continuous wire you pre-fit this on first Make sure you push it down out the way, all the way out the way, because it is heat shrink and if it detects the heat or if it reacts to the heat of the wire as you're soldering, then it will shrink when it's down here and it'd be no use. So pop it on or, or retrieve it from where it was and make sure you've cut a piece of heat shrink big enough to cover the solder joint and about at least a quarter of an inch or so of the insulation either side. So come all the way over to there, there it is covered nice and neat. All right, make sure as well have a feel around it, make sure there are no little pieces of wire sticking out because when they've got solder impregnated into them they will become quite stiff and sharp and if you then put the heat shrink over the top like that and there's a piece of wire stuck out as you heat shrink it, it can puncture through the heat shrink and then you've got a short waiting to happen. So just feel it with your fingers, you'll soon feel if there's any sticking out. If there are any little bits just flatten them down, make sure they're not offensive and then slip it back over. Job done. Right, now take a lighter. This is about as simple as it gets. It's better over the steel pen. Mm -hmm. You can see it better. Thank you. Where are we? Come back to about there. There we are. And we're going to start in the middle and work away to each end. And you're not looking to put the lighter flame straight onto it. You want to come away. It's a heat shrink. It just needs a bit of heat. There we go. How's that? Job done. That's it. Now that joint will last a lifetime, it will last as long as the rest of the wire. What's really important is that it's no thinner than the original wire because it will build up resistance and it doesn't need to be any thicker so therefore you've got a nice tidy looking joint. Two pieces of wire joined together permanently forever. Now that wasn't brilliant, all the electricians out there are going to be already commenting, mate you suck, <laughs> do it better, that was rubbish. Yes I know but I'm just a mechanic. My skills are in fabricating and designing stuff and basically spanners. Things like this I have to do two or three times a year, which is why I like to practice a little bit before I do it. So that's the same message to all of you. Any of you are gonna do electrical joints which are soldered, practice, practice, practice. That's the key thing, isn't it, Pen? It is. Practice makes perfecto. Mm. And I would say, get yourself cord flux cord solder so if you buy in flux if not buy some rosin flux get yourself a decent soldering iron you don't have to buy a posh one this was 14 pounds 99 in the electrical store not an expensive item take it a bit put it back in the box drop it in the bottom of your toolbox forget about it to three months time when you need it again it's just tools for the job and these little lighters are about three pounds on ebay mm -hmm. some of them don't always work don't they? Rubbish. that's the new one mm. this is the old one still works and that's a really useful piece of kit because if you haven't got a soldering iron you can actually solder with a flame. I won't do it now because it's a bit long winded but you can actually heat up the wire like that with the little flame until the wire is then hot enough to melt the solder you can then touch the solder on it so you can still solder even with a lighter you can solder it's just a matter of getting that wire up to about three four hundred degrees in order for that solder to flow through the joint that's the point so there's the final word goes to it a cold solder is when you drip hot solder onto a cold wire and as I've shown you that's no good at all you need to make that wire as hot as the soldering iron itself then touch the wire with the solder then you'll get a decent flow it will wick its way through the strands and you'll get a fantastic tough resilient joint that will work and it will last forever anything else Ben? That's it, good luck, get practicing. Go. Get practicing and let us know how you get on. I'd like to hear stories. I love the resultant stories of the simple skills. Have you done this before? Are you an electrician? What did you think? <laughs> Be kind, <laughs> Be nice. <laughs> Obviously it wasn't professional, but that's the point. I want you that never done it before to go and practice and tell me how you get on because I think that is the proof that the simple skills are worth our time. Anything? Here it is. Anything else?
That's it. Good luck. Take it easy, ride safe, and look forward. Good luck to all of you who entered the competition for the prize draw at the weekend. See you Saturday for some fabrication.